of his pantry. So today we're going to finish up our deer meat cutting. I decided to go ahead and um, we're going to do some grind meat as well as I'm going to cut up a couple of roasts. We're going to try a couple roasts a different, uh, different way than I've done in the past and see if we can't get some really tasty roast out of this. And so I'm going to try to get a ball tip roast and a rump roast off to at least one of the hind quarters. We only have the two hind quarters left and the two front quarters of Michael's deer. And as of tomorrow, this would have hung in a cooler that our friend has a walk-in cooler at his house. It's kind of portable and they bring it over there every year and everyone uses it. So uh, that was a question also, where do you hang your deer? And that's how we do it. If we don't have that available, we empty our garage refrigerator from top to bottom, shelves and everything, and line the whole thing with visqueen, and then have the deer meat in there and you have to rotate it. So it's kind of awkward, but it works if you've only got one to deal with, but two would make it a little more difficult. So that being said, I'm gonna do roast. I'm also gonna do some grind to get ready for my summer sausage that I'm gonna make. And I also make, um, a lot of times I make breakfast sausage, so I might bring you along for that. It's super easy. and. Uh, so, I hope you stay along for the video. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. And as always, guys, go check out all the links I've left for you in the description box below. Some of them might be really helpful to you, save you some money, and or turn you on to some really good products. All right, come on, let's go. Okay, so um, I angled the camera a little bit different, so hopefully you can see what I've got going on. Down here is the lower portion of the hind leg, which has got the shank meat on it. And then up here, if you look right here at the top of this, where the bone and the connective tissue starts, where that muscle starts is where we have to kind of go in. And so you just feel with your knife and say, okay, that's, that's the point we want to go in. It's easier to do this if your deer is hanging. And you're going to feel where the bone is. You can also see along this edge um, kind of where it starts and to keep from wasting any meat. I just follow the bone. And we're gonna take the glaze off after we get this roast off of here. If that makes sense. And so it's just a process of getting in there and following that. Kind of have to do the same thing to the other side. And when you t do this, you're going to see that these, uh, if you follow along, you've got different muscle groups. And they separate with sinew, but they separate pretty easily. And this would be your ball tip roast. Or that's what we call it. May you know, maybe somebody's got a different name for it. Um, let us see if but I can get this top flap of meat off out of my way. We'll clean that up either for grind or for the dogs. And I'm still following along what, what looks like uh, the separation of that muscle group. And we're going to go in here and just following along where the bone is. And then we're going to have to turn this big hind quarter over. He left, you know, it together in the center, and you'll see, you know, parts of the pelvis on the next one. But he left that together. And it was it was such a big hunk of meat, and this is heavy right here. Um, I couldn't lift it and separate it, so I had to have him do it. There's a little bit of fat we don't really need. Okay, so I'm going to turn this. I meant just to turn the cutting board, actually. <clears throat> and as you can see, I've got the bone exposed now on that. And I'm going to try to go up under a little bit before I turn this over and get that roast off of there. Okay, I think it's time to flip it. Need another glove. Or a, ma a man. This is heavy. And as you can see, this is that separation line that we're talking about. And it's separated by sinew. And there's where my last part of my cut is. Um, so I'm just going to follow that. Try to get right in between those two muscles. Get this 
beautiful ball tip roast over here. And I see the bone. So I'm just going to expose that. There you go. And this, I mean, this is a big roast, and there we have it. Now, that's a pretty big hunk of meat. I probably will do two out of these because that is so big. Um, I don't think that we need to eat all that. But you can see now I can get all that glaze off of there. And we've got the bone exposed. And what I'm going to show you next is a rump roast. And that's the back portion of the hind leg. So it's this rump roast. So let me get this worked on and get it all cleaned up, show you what I got in the end, and then we'll get to working on this. And we'll, we'll dissect this whole hind quarter. All right, guys. So I wanted to show you, um, there actually was another part to this. Here's your ball tip right here. This whole cap was on top, and you could see this line of where the muscle separated. So all I did was go in and get that separated, and this will go into the grind pile because there's not anything big enough for steaks. You could stew meat it, but this is your ball tip. I still say for us, this is way too big for two of us. So I'm going to cut this in half, and... We'll have two nice roasts here. Um, and somebody asked me uh, in one of my, in the last video, how much meat you get off of a deer. But look how pretty that is. It's going to be beautiful. Um, and it depends on how big the deer is. My deer was quite a bit smaller than Michael's. But you can figure, um, Michael thought after they got this one gutted, and we normally don't gut them, but after... He they got this one gutted. It took two of them to put it on the front of the Jeep. Okay, so I had to bring you back because I took a little bitty break and wanted to try some of this. So I just pan seared it with salt and pepper. Look how tender that is. And perfect medium rare. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. That's so good. Mm. Perfect amount of aging time. The flavors are concentrated and the meat is super tender. And this is not a tender area of the deer. So. Um, we're going to enjoy all of this very, very much. And I just took a random couple of chunks there. So I'll get back to cutting. <laughs> so now we're going to try to get this um, rump roast off of here. And <clears throat> the more you practice at this, you know, if I did this every time, I'd be better at it. But, um, you know, you just do what you do. So you can see that line here, and that's a muscle separation, and it goes right down to the bone. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut right in here and follow that line and I can feel the bone right there and we don't want to gouge our knife on the bone necessarily because you don't want to dull your knife and on this side where all that bone is exposed I'm going to go ahead and work that a little bit and Ooh, we're going to have all this delicious shank meat. Oh, just my favorite. It's so good. It used to be so cheap in the store to buy beef shanks or lamb shanks or any of that, but they're kind of a, been discovered as a prized possession. So, and I, I like working with a pretty small knife. Um, less chance of cutting yourself. You've also uh, got... Okay, 
um, I think you can pinpoint where you're at a little bit better than with a larger knife. And now we want to find out where this other muscle group belongs here. And I really can't see it in where I'm at. There we go. And you're just separating. Maybe I should turn this. Um, turn this for you. I'm just getting in here and really getting this separated from each other, these muscle groups. And you can leave it together as a whole as well, but I kind of want this a little flatter. And there's an odd spot in here where some blood pooled up in his leg, even though I didn't shoot him in the leg. I don't know what that's all about. But there's that hunk. And then we're going to have this here that we're going to take off. I'm going to cut this away. This little yummy nugget. Oh, it's so good. And all the meat, if you feel like, you know, you need to, like I just laid that on there. So I'm going to rinse this off with vinegar water. Um, any of the meat, I, I've got my vinegar, my sink is full of vinegar water. And I mix it, the ratio is just a couple of cups to a gallon of water so I can smell the vinegar when I put my nose to it. So, almost there. Um, okay, so now I've got a big rump roast here. I'm going to go ahead and clean this all up. We've got this bone exposed. We'll get this meat off at this end. Get the shank meat off. And you guys know the drill. All we're doing now is we've got to cut this glaze off. And if it's acceptable, it goes in the dogs. Um, you know, in for them, and it will cook that up and put it over their kibble, and they are out in their side yard. Otherwise, they'd both be standing here begging, watching my every move. <laughs> so, that's how we do it. That's how we get two roasts. And actually, I mean, you could actually use this, um, this roast and cook it up like a, a chuck roast or even smoke it like a brisket. Um, it's a little flatter but it certainly would work and that's probably how we're going to package these up so I have some options available later on. So there you go. I'm going to get it all cleaned up. I'll show you what so I got. So I've got the whole hind quarter all cut up. My cutting board, I got that washed and uh, I spray it down with a bleach, bleach solution and let it sit and rinse it again. So it gets a, a two times it gets washed. So I got the bones here for the dogs. We're just going to package those up and put them in the freezer. And I wanted to show you that last rump roast, there was a lot of layers of um, muscle connected to that. And it was just way too big a hunk of meat. So I cut all that off. And this is, to me, this reminds me of an eye of round. Um, but that's, that's how we're going to cook this. And I just think this is beautiful. So really and truly, with that and the two hunks from the ball tip, I've got three nice roasts that we can use, and I'm going to probably do these on the big green egg, um, most likely. I've got a couple of ideas. I also have my big pan of um, stew meat from the shank meat and any um, heavily gristled meat. And then I cut up the rest, and it's going in the grinder because I am going to make summer sausage. If you guys want to come along for that, be sure and let me know in the comment section below because it's delicious. Smoke summer sausage, and I'm doing it on the big green egg. Usually I use the electric smoker, but this time it's going to be done on there, and so it should be fantastic. 
as everything is on that. And then I have a whole bag of scraps for the dogs. And really, I threw very little fat away, very little, um, because they can have a little fat. It's okay, uh, just not excessive amounts. It's just like us, everything in moderation. So we're going to get this packaged up, wrapped, and put in the freezer, and we're going to start on the other hind Okay, leg. so here we go again for the other side. And my, um, this meat, that actually, I felt like that was a little bit easier to manage. It was less wrapping. And I still have the option if I decide not to do a roast, I can grind it or make steaks out of it. And so I'm going to go ahead and roast this one as well and do some more grind meat. And there'll be a package of stew meat from the shanks. So we're going to do this exactly the same as we did the other one. And uh, it worked out really well. So we had, you know, three roasts and a package, two packages of shank meat, the bones, and a big bowl, you know, this size bowl of grind meat. So, um, and that'll go for summer sausage or... Um, you know, maybe just burger or breakfast sausage. So, and I'm going to make videos on all that because I know you guys are going to want to see that. So this is how it goes. And for those of you that didn't see the last video, you're just trimming away sinew and fat. And um, I think it makes the end product much nicer. It's just like when you get a piece of meat at the grocery store, if it's full of sinew and fat that you paid good money for, you're not very happy. So um, it, hopefully your butcher would be doing the same thing. And you know, you don't have to get just absolutely uh, nitpicky about it. But And then I take that, um, any meat uh, will get washed off again in a vinegar wash like I did last time. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all done and uh, I'll show you what we got. It's a big hunk of meat. I barely could take this from the garage in here because my husband's not home. <laughs> and um, it also still had the other, you know, the pelvis attached to it, so I had to get that off of there, and that was kind of a chore, but that's okay. We got it done. So, now we're going to get to making roast. Okay, so it's time to grind some of this meat. Super easy. I've got my KitchenAid attachment on my KitchenAid. I do have a couple other grinders. I have a hand grinder, and I have another one. This one is so easy to clean, and it does a great job, so I'm going to use this little workhorse um, gift that I have, and uh, continue to use it. And so, I try to pick pieces that don't have the sinew on it. If it, if it does have a little piece, I'm going to try to whittle that off as I go. And I cut them into strips already that'll fit down in the hopper. Super easy. And it, this is how you're going to, this is going to be the base for your sausages, your summer sausage, maybe your burger meat, um, or breakfast sausage. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Make it a little loud, but super easy. And for certain things, you're going to add fat in there. You'll add some pork, like ground pork. You can grind up a pork roast, you know, a shoulder roast, and get that done. So you can see how easy this is. It takes no time at all. And I probably have, oh, probably between, it's probably about seven pounds of meat here that I've got to grind up in this bowl, and then I have another bowl to go in the refrigerator. So I'll get to grinding all this up, and I'll bring you back when we're further along, and you can see the end result, because I think it's going to fill this bowl pretty good. Let's get busy. Okay, so this is the last of the meat, and I was right. We have a big bowl, and this, this probably weighs 15 pounds, maybe maybe 20. Um, I'll take it in and weigh it, and we'll put a little caption there if I can remember. So this is the last of it, and this little grinder does so good. Uh, sometimes you'll, if you have too much sinew or, or gristle in there, you will have to go through and take the blade out and clean it off, but I'll show you... It really didn't need that this time. And she's done. Let all the meat run through as much as it will. And then to clean the um, little auger out, I got a tip from somebody on YouTube on this. And I've used it ever since. So you can see how big this bowl is. It's big. Wow. Okay. 
So I'm just going to take, you can take a piece of bread. This is a bagel. Um, we're going to take this bagel and put it down in there. And the bread cleans out. It doesn't clean it sanitary clean, but it cleans it out um, enough that you're, you're ready to get it in the sink. So we'll run that bread through. And I've got a paper towel down. And you can see the bread starting to come through, and it cleans all the meat out of there. And then you certainly can give this right here to your chicken. And that's, my girls will get that right there, neat and all. And there you go. We're all done with the grinding portion of, or what we're going to grind right now. And this is going to be, like I said, used for our summer sausage or sausage. So, there we go. Clean up my mess and I'll be back to show you something. So we've got our shoulder out here. This is the first one, and I'm just gonna start whittling away. Most of this will be a grind as well. And that's okay because we got a lot of steaks. I'm gonna take some steaks off of this, um, but the rest of it will be grind and stew meat, and it'll be fantastic. And I am just ready to get this done because it is so much fun. No, it really is. And I can't wait to get to the sausage making. So I just kind of start um, grabbing pieces that I think need to get a whittle on them first. And really that's all you're doing is taking that sinew off again. For those of you that are new to my channel, you're going to take all the sinew and fat. 